So I was kind of thinking in episodes one and two, I covered so many different things related to how I choose to improvise, how one might want to exercise the skill somehow. And so today I kind of want to just summarize a little bit some of the things that I talked about and then go into some more details. So on the one hand, if I am calling myself an improviser who performs for the public, I have to turn on this thing that says everything I do is very meaningful and just like a regular piece, it matters. People are listening. They're trying to make sense in their heads what's going on. Uh, sometimes the material will be beyond the listener because, well, let's face it, you know, if you're not used to the, these abstract sounds, chances are you're like, is this, what, what is that about, right? And somebody who is right all about clusters and, and these sort of sounds are like, okay, well, I'm here in some specific harmonic motion here now, where is it going to go? I have to stay true to whatever concept I have going on, right? So, so however I choose to improvise right now, it typically starts with being very, very fo committed to, to the, whatever concept that gets conjured up in my mind and then, you know, I might start. Okay, right away here, five notes, that could be a C-sharp minor piece. suddenly I have this stylistic choice and like all these uh, associated musics that people would probably uh, think about when they hear notes like this and so I kind of have to commit to this and now keep going with it. Now I can still destroy it later by doing this, right? By kind of having this collage of sorts, you know, these collages of styles. So that, that's yet another style. Many, the style of many styles, right? Any, any case. So we talked about this, or at least I talked about this. Then we talked, or I talked, uh, about this idea that, well, just like with practicing piano pieces, you can practice improvisation. You don't always have to put yourself on the spot, and there's certainly room for just focusing on exploration, discovering, lack of self-censorship. And I kind of, I remember talking about how kids have it made, you know. Oh, what funny sounds I'm making. Oh, single notes. Apparently Mozart at 10 months old loved these kinds of... Oh, third, so beautiful. Anyway. So then, then there is part, which is forget about the audience, just practice, just enjoy, just explore. All right. Then I remember talking about this idea of four by four, which you see on the screen right now. And that's simply to say, put the pulse as the top priority and trade fours either with a partner or with yourself. And, and for example, three, four. Two, three, four. Three, four. Three, four. Okay, two abstract, fine. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Choose single notes, choose single, so it becomes a little more melodic, a little more traditional, fine. But that idea of focusing on the rhythm, on the meter, the pulse, the beat, at the expense of everything else. Now, just to uh, slightly intensify this 4x4 four four exercise, perhaps, I would say that another thing that I certainly teach when I teach improvisation is once you explore a little bit about how tonal music works and what this idea of tonic means, well, basically it just means a home key. Let's choose one note and say that this is our 
this is where we feel safe this is where the music will go back to in the end if you want it to sound traditional so the only addition into this ping pong 4x4 exercise could be this idea of tonic start with it then go away and do anything else the response by your partner or by your other hand would be to bring us back to that tonic so now recognize that c here c there c there are the same notes you don't have to always go to the middle so for instance let's let's do it four by four So now you have a little bit of that so-called harmonic structure starting to sound even more traditional. But the whole point is to just play, get comfortable at playing random notes with just very occasional control. Yeah. And so in this 4x4 exercise, the overarching priority is be on the beat no matter what. For instance, you might get a you know mental kind of uh, block and you go... So, one two three four and that's all you played in your set of four but that's what it is that's real life sometimes you have a lot of notes to say sometimes you just kind of stumble and only do that but that's okay that's how improvisation works you work with what you've got all right so four by four uh the ping pong idea and then I started talking about how I personally didn't start improvising by having these 4x4 four four e rhythmic exercises. I was, you know, enjoying practicing this intense C minor prelude in my younger years. And all of a sudden I thought, yeah, this is really cool. Let's see what other harmonies we can do this with change it to major just change one note and suddenly it has a different color or you know, shift my hands over so I'm playing the same pattern that I'm seeing in this piece for example let's take Bach right people know this pattern but I can use the same pattern to play any note I'm, and now I'm creating this kind of almost pop song like harmony by changing one finger only on that same pattern so that's exploration that's harmonically driv driven um, improvisation practice perhaps and I think that, that that's what got me into improvising just kind of exploring harmony exploring what other interesting sonorities I could come up with now um, to maybe keep pushing into other uh, exercises that I think I personally found very, very valuable, it's to look at this idea, of course introduced by one of my teachers, as, as is often the case. So my first teacher would teach us some simple tune. This is, uh, you know, a, a, a tune that my grandfather used to whistle. He liked it. And, and the harmony is simple and, and the, the melody is simple. Right, so you have two motifs of the falling third. So it's this note, B, G, 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 A, F, F, F. And then you just have a simple scale bringing us down to this tonic, right? The, the always idea of finishing on tonic and so in the left hand we would be taught to sound out the harmonies that accompany this song so in this case it's kind of easy to see how this works tonic is D right so we've got that in our uh, uh, fifth finger of the left hand and then these notes that I'm playing in the right hand B flat and G I'm just holding those down in my left hand and when these notes change to A, F, 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 and then of course I'm now changing to A and F here. And so what I'm doing is I'm producing two different 
but very important uh, two different important harmonies and tonal music namely this last one is tonic harmony because if D is our tonic note then every other note above the tonic note that's just the most sort of uh, easy way to harmonize uh, and and uh, have a little more variety than just saying hey here is my harmony I mean you can do that right you can obviously provide harmonic support with single bass notes but it's much nicer if you add these uh, tonic triad tonic chord notes so it's, it sounds a little more full and then now this harmony which is of course not tonic right because if tonic is in, in this case d half a well d g b flat that happens to be a subdominant harmony names don't matter right now what's important is Right? Me as a kid, my fellow uh, students as kids would learn this pattern. And then the next part is called dominant. This is where we're opposing tonic. And what we're having to do for this is we need to move the D, the tonic note, down to what's known as the leading tone. The leading tone is always exactly a half step below any tonic. Right? That's an important rule to remember. So in this case, obviously, that's C sharp. Now, we don't move the thumb, we move the third finger just so that we have more opposition, you can think about this. We're opposing tonic quite a bit, so we're moving away from tonic here, but also we don't want to hold on to this F, which we played when we were playing the tonic triad, so we move it down as well. So C sharp, E, A. So again, if you're trying this out and this is new to you, I can imagine how it's it's a lot and a lot is going over the top of the head and that's normal. But kind of imagine taking time, taking, taking time, making sure you can do this and then you can do this. And now, and then you just go back to the tonic. So there are kind of four harmonic changes. Now I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, wipe out what I've got right here and put them in. How do I do this? I forgot. Like this. Now, um, here we go. So, in our little sequence, the first one is a subdominant, so I'm going to write this an S, but for people who are interested in actual notes, I'll write those out as well. Mm -hmm. Kind of thick, but hopefully still visible. Yeah, kind of like this. And then the next one is our tonic, T. And that will be just D minor here. You know what, those are way too thick. I need to probably switch over to these thinner lines. That's a little better. Okay, and then this is boom. And then the, the dominant is we have to go to that C sharp like this, and these are the notes, and then we go back to tonic. The letters, however, are subdominant, tonic, dominant, tonic. So it's a very easy progression of four, of four chords. And then you can keep looping over and over. And now the melody. Then the, this melodic line at the end, while I'm holding the dominant down, is very, very easy. You can just hold five notes down. So we would memorize, be able to play the, this little snippet. But then what the teacher would say is, okay, you've got this here, um, you know, da -da -da -da. I'm writing this in, of course, none of this was written down for us. We just memorized the notes. And da -da -da -da. But on the dominant, the teacher would say, anything is possible. So here, big X. Then you come back to tonic there. But on the big X, we were encouraged to do anything we want. Let's highlight it so it looks a little more pretty. 
we actually when we're studying harmony I remember we had different colors for different harmonic functions like subdominant would be one color and tonic would be another and it was all very pretty but uh, so here we go right I slightly changed my material at X and let's do it again and so we had to just cycle over and over keep making up more and more crazy things the important part was to get us back to tonic but how we got there doesn't matter I just go crazy what about this So kind of loosen up, try different, uh, uh, try different possibilities while having the structure around it that kind of gives it form, right? So you can still feel that it's basically like a normal piece and all of a sudden it gets a little bit crazy, but then it goes back to a clear finish. So I, f I find that this particular exercise, again, if you're interested, let's say, to get more into improvisation, this is very, very helpful. Of course, in, in this case, it's, it, it's some folk song, but you can literally take any song, any piece which you like, grab just four no, four chords, and the only thing that's important is, which is why it's better to look at the end of your song, is to look for these something, something, then dominant, and then you finish on tonic, right? Usually tr more traditional songs, especially songs from, let's say, earlier years. I don't know about, let's say, pop songs of today, but certainly the more traditional sounds of yesteryears, you're always going to have dominant tonic in the end of any song. And so you can do this. You can take some chord, take the next chord, and then the dominant comes up and you're just making stuff up. Anything you want, finish on tonic, and then do it again, and then do it again. Do it many times until you find that, yeah, I, I'm getting something out of it. I'm sort of loosening up. I'm finding some uh, interesting materials. Anyway, so I think that's, that's good for today's episode. Please comment, ask questions, subscribe, like, whatever you're supposed to do on YouTube. Anyway, I'm trying to grow this channel, so anything you do for that will be helpful. Uh, but yeah, uh, try it out and I'll try to come up with something devious for the next episode.